This episode is brought to you by the good folks over there at Woodcraft. Hello, fellow Woodchopperoos. A big chopperoo and Safety Dan here. Hey. Now, if you've been following our Monday series called What Are You Doing?, then you realize that recently I finished making this wine station cabinet. Now, in making this project, I realized that there were several steps that could be standalone individual tips. So I decided to break them down into quick tips. Now, last week I showed you how to make the perfect arch, and I used that for holding the wine bottles. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to do some baseboards and get the perfect outside mitered corner. So let's tune in and see where I'm at on that part of the project. Chopperoos, I'm here with another quick tip for you. Now, the project I'm working on is the wine station. I'm doing the baseboards next on it. And the baseboard is going to run all the way around, and at the corners, we're going to have this mitered 45-degree cut. Nothing difficult there. In the saw, 45, and make the chop. But now, I want to get nice tight corners all the way around on this. So this is the way I like to do it. With my 45 already cut on the board, I like to take a pencil and I shade this edge. What this allows me to do is I can see exactly where that comes right to the front of my cabinet. From there, I've already kind of pre-cut this board a little bit long. You'll notice in the back here, it hangs over by at least an inch. So now, I can mark that. I can put this in the saw and make the cut. I'll do that and I'll show you my next step for adding more of the baseboard. All right, I've cut, glued, and nailed my baseboard onto the side, and it looks pretty nice already. But I want to mention something about gluing the baseboard. Now, had this been like an old antique piece of furniture I was working on, I wouldn't want to put glue on the whole length of the baseboard. I'd only want to put glue in the front and then nail it. The reason being is, if this was solid wood, it would expand and contract over the seasons. And the glue will help keep that front mitered corner nice and tight. And the nails, well, they'll be able to bend a little bit as the wood moves. Now, speaking of that front mitered corner, I have my front baseboard piece here that I cut to length extra long, wider than the width of the the wine station and I made my 45 degrees on this piece here and let's see how it fits. That looks pretty good. I like the results of that. Now, what if I cut my board at 45 degrees and the results look something like this? So you can see I'm tight in the front or on the toe and I have a small gap in the back or the heel. Well, some people will probably try and put some putty or extra glue in there, but the correct way to fix this would be turn your saw from 45 degrees, inch it back a little bit, like to maybe 44 degrees. That will shave more off the front and allow it to come in for a better fit. The reason being for this is either my saw would be off a little bit or my actual piece is a little bit out of square. But again, not a big deal. These are little tips to sneak up on it. 
If it's the opposite way, if the heel or the back is nice and flush and tight, but the front or the toe has an opening, once again, you would turn the saw a little bit more to say like 46. Again, take the cut and test the fit. It's another reason why you want to cut your pieces a little bit extra long so you can sneak up on the perfect fit. Okay, I'm going to put this on here. With my pencil, I'll mark the other end, make the 45 degrees going the opposite direction, and finish up doing the side baseboard the exact same way. Got the baseboard on, and it looks pretty good. But let me show you something here real close. Take a look. I got a small little gap on it. Now, that could be a result of a couple of things. It could be that the board itself was starting to cup. Um, but what I actually found out was on my miter saw that my angle was off a little bit. I'm not talking about the miter angle, but the back compound angle. It was off like a half a degree. And you can see even something that small, half a degree, can make a gap. Now, I'm not really too worried about this because this is the baseboard, which will be facing uh, way down low on the ground. It's not going to be that noticeable. But here's another little tip again. I like to take a little bit of glue. can work that glue into my gap. And while the glue is still wet, take some sandpaper and be careful not to round over the corner too much. But if you sand on it, the sawdust will go into that crack and then it'll hardly be noticeable. Not too shabby. Okay, so there's my tips for dealing with baseboard outside corners. Well, I hope you enjoyed those tips for the next project you do or even for a room around your home. Now check this out on the wine station. Besides having storage for bottles, glass holders, and a fridge, it has this really cool drawer. Now next week I'm going to give you tips on setting drawer glides as well as getting that perfect fit so you have a smooth operating drawer. So stay tuned for that. Chad, you usually do quick tips by yourself. Why am I even here? Well, some of the viewers actually said that they wanted to see more of you, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for them. Oh, okay. How's that? Uh, let's give them just a little bit more. Okay. That should be plenty. Well, stay tuned for next week's Quick Tip, and don't forget to join us on Monday for an episode of What Are You Doing?, where you get to be a part of our show. Until then, keep on dancing. <laughs>